You are listening to the enhanced edition of the Jeff Rubin, Jeff Rubin Show. And what makes it so enhanced is that there are pictures to go along with the interview. So when you hear this noise, take a look at your iPhone or at iTunes or at YouTube or whatever you are using to listen to the show because there is a new picture I want to show you in this episode. It's probably going to be a moment, a screenshot of one of the many terrible, terrible movies you are about to hear about. And without further ado... Uh, let's start the show. Everybody. Welcome to the Jeff Rubin, Jeff Rubin Show. Today, I am very excited because I am joined by Paul Shear. I'm very excited to be here. Now, I, I'm not on Skype, which is I'm very. This I'm is very a real in person. Yes, actual. We can see each space other. Things might get real. Things might get real. Dark. I don't know. Uh, you may know Paul, of course, from the League. Uh, Human Giant, NTSF. I had to write this down because there's so oh. many of these. NTSF SDSUV. You got that, yeah. Well, I didn't have to write down oh, just right. to say that, but just the, oh. the, the sheer amount of credits, oh, the right, things nice. we have to go through. I mean, guest spots, we're talking 30 Rock, Parks oh, and Rec, yeah. uh, Happy Endings, all these great shows. And as if that is not enough, Paul is also the host of this incredible podcast, How Did This Get Made? Oh, thank you very much. Uh, which is all about watching bad movies. Yes. And that is what we're here to talk about today. Watching terrible movies. Because you seem like someone who, uh, I, I feel like a kindred spirit in that uh, you seem like someone who probably enjoys watching bad movies at least as much as you enjoy watching good ones. Is that, yeah, is that true? No, 100%. Like, I feel like I don't watch them ironically. I mean, I, I enjoy, like, I mean... I'm not watching because like, oh, this sucks. Watch out. You know, I'm like, I do literally enjoy going to the movies. And when you're disappointed, like the last bad movie I was super disappointed by like, in the theater was Green Lantern. Oh, I was like, on my list of questions uh, is, have you seen Green Lantern? And it doesn't even relate to anything else. Oh, I, Green Lantern uh, is, God, Green and Lantern that is also worse. like the reason like why, why the, how this get made get started. Because when you see a movie like that, you're like, What? Why? Like, I'm not even a fan of Green Lantern. You're not even offending my nerd sensibilities. You're just offending me as a viewer of entertainment. But as much as I dislike Green yeah. Lantern, and I've talked many, many times on the show about my uh, distaste for the movie, and I do like Green Lantern yeah. uh, as a character in the, from the comic books, I knew it was going to be bad, and right. I still went and saw it. And you know <laughs> what? Like, I've gotten so much like fun conversation, like talking yes. about Green Lantern, and not just on this show. Over the years, it was... It was almost worth seeing it, even though it was bad. I totally agree. I mean, that's how our podcast got started. I saw Wall Street 2, Money Never Sleeps, <laughs> which uh, also, if you haven't seen it, is great and bad. And, you know, it's like a sequel way too late. And it's so confusing. And But it's still kind of got that 80s kind of vibe to it. And I was talking to Jason Manzoukas, who I do the, the show with. I was like, this movie is crazy. They have like a dance scene at the end of Wall Street 2. It's ridiculous. Really? It's like a party scene and everyone's like, it's not like a full on, like they're not choreographed. Not but like Spider-Man like, 3? No. Oh, Spider-Man 3. Where, where do we begin? But like, like Wall Street 2... I was just like, I just was going on this rant about it. And Manzoukas is like, that's a podcast. You should do that as a podcast. I was like, oh, that'd be fun. You want to do it with me? He's like, yeah. And then my wife, who I see bad movies with all the time, she's like, oh, I want to do that too. And then that's how it all just got started. Like the conversations that you have with your friends after you've seen something horrible. And Green Lantern is the movie that was so bad, it inspired you to start a podcast where you watch bad movies. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Green Lantern was, it, Green Lantern was a little, we had podcasts going. Like Wall Street 2 was the impetus. And then, the movie that I like when people ask me like what bad movie do you like to show to other people? I like to show old dogs. Old dogs. Old dogs. I've never seen it. Oh, you're in for a treat. Well, well Robin that's Williams, it. John Travolta, Seth Green. Is and, William H Macy in that? No, that's the Wild Hogs. This is Whoa. the yeah yeah yeah, yeah 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 yeah. This is different. The same director, and it's basically about <laughs> uh, John Travolta and Robin Williams are in sports marketing. And they're trying to land a big Japanese account. It's like, and it's kind of a kids' movie, and it's kind of not a kids' movie. Robin Williams had a one night stand with uh, Kelly Preston. Kelly Preston's going to jail because she protested something. Mm -hmm. She's like, you have to watch oh, your kids that you movie. didn't even know that you had. Yeah, yeah. And so, in the week of him pitching to these big Japanese corporation, he's got his kids, and they're crazy, and he's a single guy. And it's amazing. Isn't there a difference between watching a bad comedy and a bad like action movie or a bad superhero movie? 
Yeah, I think so. I don't like to talk about like too many like bad comedies, but I feel like a movie like that, which is like a four quadrant movie, which is I always think what like, is a four quadrant. In movie my mean? mind, I always think a four quadrant movie is like we'll get the old people, we'll get the young people, we'll get the kids, we'll get the guys, we'll get the girl. You know, it's like that. Like just I guess, broad, just broad. It's like it's trying to hit. And I think like Green Lantern is also trying to hit that too. It's like it's for guys, it's for girls, it's for young people, it's for old people. You know, it's like it's just it's trying to do everything at once. Whereas mm-hmm. you know other movies are a little bit more refined and I think that's when you make a bad movie when you're trying to be like well appeal to everybody what is it about old dogs that makes it the best movie to show to other people well first of all no one's heard of it and secondly I, I think what I'm fascinated by on our show is like you can talk about yeah of course uh, what's his name Gary Busey is going to be terrible in that movie The Gingerbread Man like that's that's a bad movie we all know that you don't need to even watch that to know I'm more obsessed with the movies that are trying to be it like and so this is a Disney movie with Travolta and Robin Williams and it feels like an R movie trapped in a PG movie and there's some great stuff in it like uh, they take these Viagra pills uh, that make your face into the Joker, like they, like, like almost like That's the Heath. That's not Light. how Viagra yeah, works. Cr- their faces are. It's like a Photoshop effect. Their faces are like in a permanent smile. It's. Cr- I mean, uh, is Seth it for Gr- kids? It's. Oh, that was the movie. Was that the movie with Seth Green and the gorilla and all the yes, advertising? Yes, yes. Seth Green gets attacked by a gorilla. Seth Green also runs off to Japan to become a karaoke a master. Doesn't he get sexually assaulted by a gorilla? Am I making that up? No, you're not making that up. I, that is pretty much what happens. There's a jetpack in it. Um, <laughs> there is a lot of oh, and the the runner of the movie is the two guys are old dogs. Uh, John Travolta and Robin Williams, but they also own an old dog who is pissing himself the entire movie. And I'm not making like it literally is pissing itself the entire movie. That's what's so weird about some of those broad comedies and why some of them stand out as so terrible is like I guess it's for kids and like kids could laugh at these jokes. But then uh, and Cat in the Hat jumps to mind here yes. too. The Cat in the Hat live action adaptation with Mark Myers, which should theory you know it's a Doctor Who book should yeah. be for kids, has some very very vulgar jokes, and it sounds like this movie does too. Well, the Old Dogs is definitely like, it's a kids movie, but with adult themes. It's like it's about two men who have never been married. And they don't, they like being single, but they're kind of getting old. They're kind of lonely in their lives. They've never found love. But it's like a, but it's like also like a kid. It's it's not like that movie, it's a PG movie. So what audience wants to see that movie as a PG movie? Do you think maybe that's a thing where, and obviously, I obviously, I don't know. I don't think you know. So we're speculating where maybe it was, it was a movie for adults and then it got to the studio and they were like, okay, well, we can't make this movie, but if we tone it down and make it for kids. Well, that's what I heard. I heard there's an R rated version of the movie a cut version of the oh, movie oh interesting and um, that's way worse than what I said because what I said proposed <laughs> like there was some planning involved and oh, before no, no. they started rolling they were but the, to, to, to shoot it and then be like you know what we could do with this is way way worse we could make a PG we yeah. could get everybody and then that's like the idea of like that four quadrant thing it's like well why are we cutting out the kid audience let's bring them in yeah. too they like this giant gorilla they love Seth Green you know it's like and and no, and no offense to anybody in that movie but it's a piece of Junk and it effectively uh, killed Wild Hogs too because the director of that movie was going to go off and do Wild Hogs too, but then that movie did so badly they're like because but Wild Hogs was a huge success, huge success. Have you seen Wild Hogs? I have not seen Wild Hogs. So how do you choose? Like there's there's almost an infinite amount of yes. movies. Uh, how do you choose which one you're going to watch on the podcast um, every week? We open it up to our audience a lot and just and what I like to do in that is just watch to see what people say a lot. So like a lot of people will be like. You should totally do uh, like Inception. That movie sucked. It's like, well, okay, that's your opinion. But yeah. like, but then when you get like fifteen people telling you you got to do Batman and Robin, which I'm a hundred percent on board to do, mm-hmm. then you're like, okay, that's one that we're gonna put on the list. Like, so it's just kind of like looking around, and then sometimes you get like your interest spiked. Like, I got an email the other day, and someone's like, oh, how come you haven't done Barbed Wire? And I was, or Barbed Wire, that Pam uh, Pam Anderson movie. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh. Holy yes, of course! Like that's great. Like so, it's just like kind of pulling them out and just seeing which you know which ones kind of come to the surface. And is it ever a chore for you to get through these movies because you have to watch one of them every so often? Now, yeah. Well, we do two episodes a month. The thing that's a bummer is when they're bad, when they're just bad. Like Last Airbender is just bad. There's no joy in it. There's no fun in it. Like I'll watch Old Dogs again and again. I'll watch a lot of the movies that we've watched Mm -hmm. a couple times. But there's a couple ones. Like and last Airbender really comes to mind. We're just like, 
oh, when is this going to be over? This is like a bummer. I tried to watch, uh, with Pat Castles, we tried to watch Battlefield Earth. Oh, that, we did that on our podcast. I found Battlefield Earth, and I am someone who, as we've already established, yeah. watches bad movies for pleasure, mm-hmm. uh, completely impenetrable. It was like there was a force field around the movie that um, prevented me from paying attention yes, to it. Yes, no, I, I, I... turned it off after like 15 or 20 minutes. I was at the... I somehow was at the premiere of that movie in New York, um, and it was like... My, my, what do you I, mean somehow at the uh, premiere my, of Battlefield my, Earth? My ex-girlfriend did like uh, junkets, and she's like, oh, there's this movie, Battlefield Earth, you want to see it? And I was like, oh, I, like, I didn't quite know what I was in for. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. And we saw it, and I was like, whoa. I was so blown away by like what I saw. And I was like, maybe I was just in a bad mood. And then when I watch it again, you're right, it's impenetrable. And that's another movie that's like... There's some fun stuff, like there's a couple fun scenes like in the bar and the rat brain and all the terminology, but it's like a, just a really crappy version of Star Wars, like a really bad version of Star Wars. Yeah, it's interesting how like the stink from that movie, it really only hits John Travolta, like no one ever oh, yeah. held that against Forrest Whitaker. Like, no. It was like very or clear. Or Barry, uh, what was his name, Bear, the guy who was- Barry the, Pepper. Barry Pepper, yeah, like they both escaped unscathed. So you've seen all of Battlefield Earth. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I found Battlefield Earth to be one that was like not- underrated or overrated in its badness like it was exactly properly rated it really is like a zero percent nothing redeeming that film uh, yeah that is a, that last airbender they go in a special category then they're like to me there's other movies that people like i like look i love bad movies but then there's movies that are they're not bad but they're insane and i want to tell people about them like i think they're awesome but people may view them as bad like, like what's an example of that crank, crank two. two i thought you were gonna say yeah. crank. crank i love the interview when you guys had the, oh, the crank the, yeah. guys on it's one of my favorite had this get made they're amazing they're they so are great. amazing i think crank is like kind of disguised as a it's like a very smart movie disguised as a bad movie you yes know? and i think that people think oh that's just a bad movie but then i've had so many people that go oh i watch it it was good like you yeah. know like that like fast five to me is another movie that, yeah. like that really like like i like i like big dumb michael bay-esque mm-hmm, type of things mm-hmm. and i thought that was like michael bay done well like i, I wouldn't say like you know, whatever the one before that was as good. Fast Five to me. Fast Five was better than Fast Four. Four, yeah. I can't believe I've seen both of them and have an opinion. But oh it, it yeah, really I've seen was. them both in the theater. I saw Fast Four in Rumble Seats. I remember that. The Rumble yeah, yeah, Seats, you guys amazing. That. The Rock, I think, really elevates uh, Fast Five. Yeah, of course. And then isn't there someone coming in the next one? Like, isn't there someone? They're adding someone to the cast. Yeah, they're adding. Oh, uh, somebody really good too. I remember. Yeah, I just yeah. remember reading about that. Yeah. I'm excited about Fast uh, Fast Six. Like, I'm, yeah, those I'm movies in. are pretty good. Yeah, they're they're, con- I don't think they're as good as Crank. I think. Crank oh and no, Crank no, too. Crank is in a in a whole field by itself. But just to be fair in the podcast, we'll try to sometimes go like these are movies that we like as much as we love how bad Catwoman with Halle Berry is. Catwoman's so bad. Oh, so bad, but actually so good too. It's like yeah. it's like whoa, this is amazing. When she's eating all the sushi uh, and playing basketball with the Benjamin basketball Br- scene with Benjamin Bratt Brad, is. It, yeah. is Unbelievable! One of the worst. So amazing, and it's like, and and you know, so as much as we get enthusiastic about that, we like to kind of spread the wealth and be like, well, we also found this good. Like, um, when Patton Oswalt came on our show, he was like, I want to talk about this movie, this Punisher War Zone movie. I love it. You should see it. I get the director on, and this woman, Lexi Alexander, you know, directed Punisher War Zone. It's a movie that no one saw. I saw Punisher. Oh yeah, yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> I've seen. All three Punisher movies. Oh, the, man. Which, which is the best, in your opinion? I actually kind of like... I'd actually even say I very much like the Thomas Jane one from 2004 Oh, right. That was the one. I didn't see that one. I, I actually like good. that movie. Uh, pretty unpopular opinion. I'm, I'm And very he alone. made a short just like uh, a week ago. That, despite, yeah. Despite being one of the... It's unbelievable that I'm one of the only people that like Thomas Jane as the Punisher and didn't watch the yeah, story. Yeah, you really are not a good fan. <laughs> I know. Uh, the Thomas Jane Punisher is like a good 90s action movie. It's like all like squibs and like right. a lot of people like shaking their arms and be like, oh, and getting <laughs> shot up. And I love that in a movie. And it's got a ton of that. And I didn't like, well, did you like Warzone? I liked Warzone. You didn't like, I liked Warzone because, I mean, I like Warzone in the sense that I was like, whoa, she went for it. She, like in my opinion, she made like, the only way you can, and The Punisher is a dark movie. I mean, yeah. a dark character. And if you want to handle it the right way, I feel like, there's a performance. I, I wasn't so open about this. I'm not a huge fan of uh, the guy from The Wire's performance in that. He was crazy. Yeah, Dominic uh, West, who's McNulty, yes. right? Am I getting his name yes, right? Yes, exactly. He played uh, Jigsaw. Jigsaw. He was not very good. Um, 
but uh, she said that she wanted Freddie Prince Jr. for that, and oh, the studio wouldn't let him, uh, wouldn't let her cast him. So that was interesting to see, like what the studio would let her do and what they wouldn't let her do, and and how her vision. Like how she couldn't get her version of the movie exactly out. I like Punisher Warzone in the sense that it was so balls to the walls. Like, whoa, it's I mean, it's not like Mm -hmm. it's dark and heavy. There is a great scene in that movie, a really phenomenal scene. And I know I'm just talking about one moment here, but a lot of these movies like Spider-Man 3 does not have one good moment in it or nothing like this. There's a scene where there's. Uh, there's, I don't know, I forget exactly the details, but there's some gang of hooligans and they're parkour enthusiasts oh, and yeah, like jumping yeah. between the buildings. And there's one part where they're all doing elaborate flips between the buildings. And as one of them's doing a flip in slow motion, out of nowhere, he gets blown up by an off-screen yes. bazooka just out of nowhere. And it's so funny. Yeah, that really made me laugh. I really like that. I love the opening scene. I mean, the opening scene where he's like, Twisting around on a chandelier and just like blowing people up was insane. The scene in uh, the Thomas Jane Punisher yeah. where they kill his family, you know, like kind of the origin yeah. of Frank Castle, is crazy. There's like 30 Castle family members, like children getting mowed down. Oh, really? And then the end of that movie, John Travolta's the bad guy in that yeah, movie. Yeah, right. And uh, the Punisher has this like incredibly elaborate revenge scheme. And when he, he springs it on him, it's so elaborate. Like, it defeats him, like, physically, morally, like, kills all these people in his family. Uh, and then, like, as as the cherry on top, he's dragging John Travolta's uh, dying body as he's screaming behind a car through an exploding parking lot. And they show uh, an aerial top-down view of it. And the cars are exploding into the Punisher logo. Oh, that's amazing. It's just like the cherry uh, on top of this elaborate re- <laughs> revenge scheme. It's so good. Well, I, you know, you bring up John Travolta. John Travolta is in the upper echelon of my favorite guys in bad movies. Uh, besides Paris with Love, I love that movie. I actually didn't see that, even though oh. I love Taken. I should check out Paris with Love. That's like, I put that over it. in the Crank 2 side. I like oh, that Oh, that's a lot. interesting. Um, Taken was like, obviously quite good. I think yes. that's not a secret. And I, it wouldn't surprise me that the guy's other movies. Like, yeah, I mean, from Paris with Love is goofier and crazy. I mean, you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. What's going-? You know, like, John Travolta shoots into the ceiling and then cocaine starts coming out of the ceiling and he's doing crazy accents and kissing his gun. I don't want to give too much away. It's definitely worth a watch. Um, but Travolta and Nicolas Cage seem to be the highest offenders. I can't believe you're putting Travolta on the same level as Nicolas Cage. I thought Nicolas Cage was going to be your number one. Well, no, Nicolas Cage is my number one. Like, Nicolas Cage is definitely the number one. And I think the top three are like Nicolas Cage... Uh, definitely Travolta. And now I, we're going to get into a little bit of uh, Pacino. We only did one Pacino so far. Oh, have you seen Geely? Oh, Geely's, we did it. Geely is also as bad as its reputation. Oh, like, G- and, it, and it, super fun to watch, too. Like, Geely, right? I mean... Well, I think what a lot of people don't recognize about yeah. Geely, Geely is that everyone remembers that Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez are in it, and it was like kind of as that was exploding. Yeah. I remember the, the they made uh, that, celebrity they made, yeah. of it. But and I think that's what people remember about the movie. But the plot, the actual plot of that movie, is that they are for They're, some reason they are taking care of, of a, an autistic of kid. An, yeah, and a, he like loves Baywatch is his yes. thing, and it's a really like the kind of plot that really has to be handled with like oh, and they don't handle security. it at all. The, complete the kid op- who plays the autistic kid in that is. I mean, I would say it's an offensive portrayal. <laughs> Where's the line where something becomes good? Because I actually would say Crank is a good movie. I would Crank that is a, no, I say Crank. Yeah, I, I I am saying Crank is a good movie. I, uh, so not every show on how did this get made is bad. No, not every movie on how did this. Get no, made it, no, not every movie. Although people don't like it when we like things, which we talk about with the same level of enthusiasm. But what I guess what have you liked that you didn't expect to like? Um, well, I mean, we've only done I think three. Three episodes where we really have like talked about things that we love, uh, which would be Punisher, uh, Crank Two, and Fast Five. Those are the ones, uh, and then I think the rest are all like The Room we love, uh, but not. But that's not a good movie. I'm not recommending yeah, you to see that. But um, how do, so wait. The question is how do, how do they go back and forth? How do you draw the? Where do you draw the line? I think to me, I mean, I think I think it's pretty easy. I mean, like. <laughs> We tr- we I'm never surprised. I'm not like, oh, let's watch Godzilla. Like Godzilla is another terrible movie uh, that Matthew yeah. brought to mind. Uh, we actually almost- have uh, in our office somewhere. There's like this making of Godzilla book from 1998. It's so funny because it's like 
so enthusiastic. It's like, look at the technicians working on like skinning it. And it's like, unbelievable special effects will create. It's so terrible. And it's like before the movie came out. So it's eternally optimistic about it. It's like the uh, commentary track on From Justin with Kelly to to Justin. I've never seen that one either. The Justin Kelly American Idol movie, uh, where they recorded it before the movie came (laughs) out. And they're like, oh man, people are going to love this. This is going to be great. They're so psyched. Um, I'm never surprised. It's not like we put on Godzilla and I'm like, oh, this is actually really good. We are pretty much always going after, we're chasing the bad ones and it's trying to find it. Like right now, we're in the middle of doing this like summer movie thing. So we're just finding bad summer blockbusters and they are, there's no shortage of those and they're amazing. I think, I mean, to me the how do, like, how do you identify a bad movie? I always say, it has to be about the logo. Whenever you see a bizarre logo at the front, like some production company has gone out of business at, because of this movie. <laughs> so, you know, it's like Shutter House or something that you've never seen. That's a good beginning sign. Um, I would say if there's any sort of skateboarding, surfing, uh, parkour, like there's a, like those like uh, whatever, of, sports. whatever is of the moment yeah. and, like, and they're doing it on some sort of thing that you're not at. Like in Spider-Man 3, there's a little bit of like uh, like uh, surfing in there, like air surfing. It's like, all right, so if you see that, you know that you're out. And then it's like the people like you're like, Gary Oldman was in this? Like tiptoes. tiptoes yeah. You're like, wait tiptoes a, a second. One. Yeah, tiptoes is really weird because everyone in the movie hates tiptoes too because apparently um, – the movie was like a two-hour movie, and then they just like chopped it down to like eighty-eight minutes. Tiptoes, to release it. I feel like we got to explain, is a yes. movie where Matthew McConaughey is getting married to Kate Beckinsale. I want to say. Well, I would even go. I would just walk you back just as even second. Matthew McConaughey and Kate Beckinsale are dating, not even so seriously that they know each other's parents' names or what they do. They're kind of strangers who've been fucking, and then she reveals, "I'm pregnant." Which causes Matthew McConaughey to be like, oh boy, um, I come from a family of midgets and we might have a midget baby. And she's like, what? How could you never tell me about this? And then it becomes like an intense drama about Matthew McConaughey not wanting to come to terms with the fact that he is from a family of midgets, and then uh, which sounds not terrible. That sounds like an that's something new. That could that could eh, be an okay movie. Maybe you're more optimistic than me. Well, the, the <laughs> real miscalculation here that like really sp- yes. throws the movie for a loop is that uh, Gary Oldman yes. plays a, a full size man, a yes. great actor, plays uh, his midget brother, and. Surrounded by actual midgets, so it's almost like doing midget blackface. Yeah, because he is not a midget, but yet, like, so it's like we couldn't find a good enough midget to be you. So we got a better actor. Like, yeah, meanwhile, Peter Dinklage is in it. Um, who does a crazy French accent in it. Peter Dinklage, amazing actor. Like Game of Thrones blows me away. This movie, it's like, and then that's a perfect example. It's like great actors doing something <laughs> a little bit crazy, like off center, like. Peter Dinklage doing a French accent going, I am French, I love wine. He's it's having like, fun in it. Yeah, <laughs> I guess. But uh, yeah, it's th- like that always is like a good sign. Like when you see an actor taking a big thing, a big swing and a miss. Yeah, it seems like your show is fair in that respect and that like you don't pick with like exceptions like The Room or maybe Birdemic. Like, yeah. You're not picking on like indie movies. Like exactly. these are movies that had a chance. Exactly. They're all movies that were made. I think that that's our whole thing. Like they're like these when I said that thing about Four Quadrants. They're all movies that were trying to be move like real movies and they kind of failed. The only reason why we did Birdemic and uh and The Room was cuz I felt like we had something interesting to add to them, which was we had the actor uh we had two actors from both of those movies on to talk about shooting those movies which i found immensely interesting because it's what did, like what did they say about it well well the tommy wiseau the room experience which you haven't seen the room it's amazing just buy it you won't be let down every time it watches it gets better but we had greg sestero who was the line producer on the movie who became like the lead actor against tommy wiseau in the movie and he was just, I mean, he's saving a lot of it for his book, but he told us a lot of stuff. And I'm trying to remember what he told us on air because he did tell us some great stuff off air that he's saving for his book. But, uh, like, 
he said that him and Tommy were in acting class together and they would go run lines by tossing a football around. He taught Tommy about tossing a football. So when you see the room, there's a couple of scenes where they're just tossing a football around and like Tommy found that to be very American to toss a football. So like, it, but he doesn't really know how to do it. It's like almost like playing catch with a, a underhand catch with a football. So that was where that came from. He believed that Tommy lived on the set. Um, the movie took like six months to make. They had two people cast for every role. So there's a character in the movie that in midway through switches out because that actor quit and they just replaced him with another one. Which is like something they do on TV shows, but not yes, movies. Not in the middle of a movie. Yeah. We're without any explanation. And when you, you've had several people that were involved in the movies, like yeah. you talked to Vanilla Ice about Cool oh, as yeah, Ice. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, this Punisher, the yeah. Punisher director. Have you ever approached someone and said, hey, we do this podcast about bad movies and they're offended that you want to talk to them on it, that you're, you're including their movie? You know, Vanilla Ice was the trickiest because I don't think Vanilla Ice knew what he was coming to do. Like, He seemed very... He in- very cool, very happy to be there. Um, and he liked talking about the movie. I don't think... I think that he thought we were like huge Cool as Ice fans and like didn't quite understand what the podcast was. So we tried to... We tried to, you know... Also, I don't think he actually remembers the movie. Yeah, I, yeah. I, that was actually One more thing, shocking than anything. I couldn't believe when he said that he was nineteen when yeah. he shot that movie, and that sixteen, I think, when Cool is or uh, when uh, Ice 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 Baby, Baby came yes, out. Yes, that, that was the most interesting that, thing to that me. Was incredible! That kind of blew my mind because we were saying it's super creepy to see that he like comes to town and then like gets like he sneaks into a girl's bedroom, a high school girl's bedroom, and then like lays in bed with her. And we're like that's creepy. Like this twenty year old dude like creeping into like a sixteen year old's bedroom is like no no I was like. 17 i was like oh yeah that was less creepy uh but yeah it's great like i always try to have people come to us like if they've heard about it or we have a friend that because you don't know where people's senses of humor are if they're open about talking about it there's also people who can't talk about it because they're afraid about like upsetting the people they may have right, been involved right. in but yeah we we've been very lucky to have people come on and talk about stuff and if they can't come on and talk about things that they've been involved with it's fun just to have like people that you know like I, one of my favorite people was having Damon Lindelof come on to talk about uh, Superman 3 which a terrible Superman movie the mm-hmm. Richard Pryor Superman movie where it was like a Richard Pryor movie not really a Superman movie and I love having like people who have uh, who are not just comedians come on and talk about things too. yeah Damon Lindelof obviously like I bet he has a lot of interesting things to say about like the mythology of the film and yeah, all, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Well, Damon Lindelof, the reason why he, uh, I mean, I, I know him a little bit because I did some stuff for Lost like in the final season. Oh, and, I remember. Uh, <laughs> some good old Lost viral stuff. And he uh, he was tweeting about Superman, uh, Spider-Man 3, and I was like, come on our show and talk about it. So like we do a lot of that stuff. Like people will hold on movies. There's a couple of people that we have like lined up that have their movies waiting. Like Tom Sharpling is a, a perfect example of like, he's obsessed with that movie, Mr. Brooks. Oh, and- isn't he also obsessed with Roadhouse? Oh, that would be good for him too. Yeah, I love Roadhouse. Roadhouse is great. Like, I think Ro- I've watched Roadhouse enough now where it's another one like Crank, where I'd, I'd actually say Roadhouse is a pretty good movie. Well, Roadhouse we've like kind of shot down a couple times because we felt like that's kind of good, right? Like, yeah. it, like, and we yeah, we don't know. It's like yeah, it's tough. I mean, I enjoy them all. It's a very rare. Like Godzilla is a yeah, like the Godzilla Last Airbender. Battlefield Earth, where you're just like, oh, please let this be over. How much longer? How much longer? I think what makes Roadhouse and uh, Crank stand out is those movies are not lazy. Like those movies keep like they start yeah. you know, from a crazy place and then they keep topping themselves. That, it's like Point Break. It's yeah, exactly Point the same thing. Like Point Break. I love Point Break. Yeah. And then when you watch it and you really are looking at it, you're like. Wow, there is some bizarro acting in this movie and some crazy choices. Yeah, like, like moment to moment, it's not much better than something like, um, I don't know, Punisher Warzone or whatever. Yeah. Just like a, a worse movie, but the whole, as a whole, like you just Love never it. get bored watching it. Point Break you- is like one of my top favorite movies, I think, because uh, it's just like, I'll watch it anytime it's on. Like, it's like, it's so much fun. It's so crazy. I think Point Break's another one. First of all, are they official? Are they rebooting Point Break, or did I just assume that? I've heard that, but I haven't seen any movement on it. I feel it like sounds like something they're gonna do. It would be so bad because you feel like it would be like about extreme sports, and there would be again, just it wouldn't be cool. It wouldn't be about surfing. Like there was something like, and plus, Keanu Reeves, not, not Keanu Reeves, but uh, Patrick Swayze is so good in that movie, and Catherine Bigelow is an amazing director yeah. too. So I mean, the movie is actually really well directed, and it's like just heightens and 
You can't. I mean, the actors in that movie you can't beat. If, if I'll be very happy if they never reboot Back to the Future. Oh Ferris man, Day I never off, thought about that. And 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 Point Break. Like just you're just giving people ideas right now. Uh, I've heard I've heard people say they're going to try to reboot Back to the Future. Has been a big one. That I've heard like Justin Bieber's name. Was oh, like, that's the worst thing oh, I've ever heard. That's so terrible. Sad. That's it's so terrible. So tragic just to think about. So when you watch these movies. Do you watch them by yourself? Do you take notes? Like, what is the actual yeah. viewing experience like? Um, we, uh, occasionally when we see something in the theater, like, um, we saw Sucker Punch in the theater. Like, Bad? Uh, oh, amazing, amazing. <laughs> like, it, it, it is a movie, and, and I, I, you know, there's a lot of controversy over this word. I'm not trying to make a joke about it. I'm just saying that the movie is primarily a rape movie disguised in a fantasy movie. The if you don't know what this movie is, it's a PG thirteen movie about girls in an institution that are getting raped, and when they get raped, they fantasize about being in these crazy, like kind of RPG mech war. Or like, it's cra- when you that look gets back at, to the theme where you're saying like big swing, big big, big swing, big swing, and a huge for a PG thirteen movie. It's a crazy, it's crazy. So um, we saw that all together in the theater. That was me, Jason June, and Chelsea Peretti. And then you kind of scribble notes down on your iPhone. But I like watching it at home with a notepad and sitting there. And I, I, I watch a lot of them by myself. Uh, sometimes I watch them with June. But And we just never, June and I don't talk about it before we get on air, though. I just like to come in. Uh, yeah. We've all seen it. And then as soon as we go, we're we're going. So it's not like we don't go over anything before we, we start going. But I feel like part of the joy of watching bad movies, the reason I'll often watch a bad movie yeah. with a friend, and st- like if I ha- some friends are over uh, and we're, we want to watch a movie or we have time to watch a movie yeah. or whatever, the reason I'll often prefer to watch a bad one to a good one is because you can talk through it. And like it's, like, I it's agree. like hanging out with your friends. Whereas if you watch a good movie, it's a little more... Uh, Isolated. It's almost I agree. I well, what I basically we are doing the same thing. We're just putting that on. We're putting the conversation right. on pause. We're saying like we will have this conversation. Like I'm just not watching. I'm not at home like watching bad movies just for the fun of it. Like I'll, I'll be like, we'll pick our movie, we'll watch it, and then it's exciting. That like I can't wait to talk about it when we get in there because it's like really fun. Like we are uh, the next movie we're doing is uh, Batman and Robin, and I hadn't watched that since the theater, and I was like, oh boy, this is. This is like a better than I am remembered it being, and also like, what's the difference between Batman? This is so yeah. interesting. Like Batman and Robin versus '60s Batman. Like '60s Batman was, was also intent. I love '60s Batman. Yeah, I think we talked about that on yeah, yeah. the show a lot. It is also intentionally cheesy, and like, why couldn't Batman and Robin do the same because, thing? Because, and th- maybe this is what we're coming to. Because I, you know, I, I don't have a succinct answer for your question. Because I think what we're coming to is that Batman and Robin is another movie that puts these heavy themes on a crazy thing. So it's like, all right, so you're gonna have Mister Freeze going like, "Chill out, uh, you know, I'll freeze you later or whatever." Like, so you're gonna have all that. Fine. You're gonna have tight shots of like butts. Okay. You're, you know, and and you're gonna do all this sort of stuff. But then. Why introduce a subplot about Alfred dying oh, and then get that. really like like dramatic about it where Alfred's like getting over to a wall and like, uh, uh, you know, he's dying and he's like leaving a will. It's like, wait a second, like what what is that? Where why does that belong in this movie? So it's like it's almost like they're trying to do too much like they're not committing to like if it was all like camp, it would be great. Then they should go all the way and make bam, boom, you know, but they the actions get is very serious. And uh, also, maybe that's like the quadrants again, where uh, yeah, it's just that has to be all things to all people. They're like, we gotta, have, we gotta have a serious moment. We gotta have some funny Schwarzenegger stuff. We gotta have a hot girl. So we gotta get Alicia Silverstone in there. And Alicia Silverstone's transition to Batgirl is so mind-boggling. It's like she stumbles, literally stumbles into the Batcave. And then, like, this alert, 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 someone's in the Batcave. And it's, like, a hologram Max Headroom of Alfred. And he's like, oh, like, you said, oh, it's you, my my niece. He's prepared like, for he's this seen, eventuality. Seen, yeah, yeah, he's seen it. And he goes, well, I thought you'd find the Batcave. And she goes, well, I want to help Batman and Robin. She's like, okay, well, I made you a suit in case you wanted to do it. It's right over here. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, not only did he predict that she was going to find the Batcave, uh, he predicted that she would want to fight bat- with Batman and Robin. And he made her a suit preemptively and just sent her off on her way. No training. Like, like, all that we know about her is that she's been a, a mo- she drives motorcycles really well. I like to see the scene where Alfred records an answer for every possibility uh, where he's just like, oh, you're not interested in helping Batman. Yeah. Robin, he checks that one off the list. He's like, 
All right, now I got to record one for <laughs> if she wants to help Batman, but she's already got the costume. It's like a really crappy choose your own adventure. Like, all right, and go back. Okay, now it's like, uh, but that's like Superman too. Like the crystals. Like, mm-hmm. uh, like he already puts all the different crystals in. It's like every question in the world is in that crystal thing. Just so crazy. Superman, like Batman, kind of veered off into silliness. And I guess oh, yeah. it doesn't help that Batman came after the Tim Burton Batmans, which were also kind of kind of. And I think that what they didn't do was they never really let. They never, like, let it fully go. Like, they didn't, like, it wasn't like, okay, Tim Burton's Batman, we're leaving that, we're going to go over here. They're like, oh, we're going to keep elements of Tim Burton's Batman, and we're going to also make it funny, too, and we're also going to do this. Like, And Akiva Goldsmith wrote that script. Like, yeah. he's written some... He wrote A Beautiful Mind. Yeah, like, yeah. So he's, he's, like, got, he's, got, a, he's, he's got an Oscar on his show. Yeah, he's a heavy hitter screenwriter. <laughs> and so, like, that's why I feel like you get those moments of, like, Oh, there. This could have been like a good Batman, and then you see the Joel Schumacher influence of like close up on ass, close up on cod piece, and it's like wait a sec. Like so, I think those are the two fighting forces there. Now, have you seen Batman Forever recently? Because Batman Forever at the time, I mean, I was like twelve or thirteen, yeah. which is like about I like the sweet both. spot. You like Batman and Robin at the time? I think I did, yeah. I think at the time no one liked Batman and Robin. Maybe, I, but Batman I, Forever fooled us, and I think that maybe Jim Carrey. Right, a lot that was at the, he's, he's the carrying a lot of the weight. Yeah, because that was with Hart. Yeah, that was with the Tommy Lee Jones's uh, Two Face. Right, but it wasn't until Batman and Robin came out where I feel like people saw. We're like, wait a minute. Yeah, you're right. These I didn't Schumacher know. movies are not very good. Yeah, they. They. Yeah, I think you're right. I feel like there was a, a thing. I haven't watched it recently. That would be interesting to watch Batman. Yeah, I wonder forever. how that one holds up because I'm guessing not well. You know, maybe this, again, the sheer force of the performance might carry it through. But, yeah, people don't even talk about Val Kilmer as Batman. Yeah. Like, you got to remember, he, by the way, whoa, I saw Val Kilmer do his one-man show of Mark Twain. Have you heard about that? I have heard about it. That, if we could do that I, and people could see it, that would definitely be, uh, that would almost be on the side of so insane. I guess that's our two things. So insane, it's great. And uh, and so bad, it's good. So Crank 2, so insane, it's great. Val Kilmer doing his one man version of Mark Twain. So insane. It's great. It's I, I'm always fascinated by like it's such an so interesting to me what separates good bad and bad bad. I know. It's, and the best example I have is is in, it's not movies. It's TV. Yeah. I can watch Full House for hours. Yeah. I can watch Full House. Saved by the Bell. Non. Saved by the Bell. I can watch tons of. Yeah. Family Matters. I cannot stand at all. That's great. That's a great And like, Or Perfect line Strangers. Of, Perfect Strangers. That's a great distinction. And family Matters is Full House. No, I know right. Full House isn't good. Family Matters is not good. Neither show is funny. But like, so why can I watch this one but not the other? I think that the, the good, bad have a life force to it. I mean, that may sound too lofty, but like, there's something like, enjoy it. Like, there's a lot of bad stuff that's not fun. It has to be fun on some level. We were talking about like Nicolas Cage because we haven't even cracked into Cage yet. Like, there's two sides of Nicolas Cage, like Rage Cage, where he is like, uh, you know, he's like ah, and then there's like uh, Nick Tick, where it's like Nick, ha- like Nicolas Cage has like just ticks, and he's a lot smaller. He's doing like he's a lot more in his body. For me, Rage Cage, you got to go more with the Rage Cage. It's the same with Al Pacino. It's like. Al Pacino's been in a lot of bad movies, but the ones I like is one where he's like screaming and going nuts and, you know, kicking a TV out of the car. Although that was a good, uh, what was that movie? He kicked I the, I mean, yeah, I forget movie. He kicked the TV out of the car. He was like so mad at his ex-wife. He just started kicking a TV and knocked it out of his car. Have you seen Jack and Jill? Yes. It's, Cause he's in that too, right? He is in that. How is Al Pacino who was like one of the greatest actors of the seventies, one of the greatest ever yeah. in the film. Like how has he ended up in two of what could be considered the worst movies of all time. Well, it's funny because I feel like first of all, I will say just you know, I'm you know, I I'm not saying that I'm above this. I've been in things that are not great movies. You will who knows? Everyone sets out to make a movie and I think you think this is going to be good. Like, oh, this is funny. I trust this person. That's going to be a good thing. And then it just doesn't turn out that way. You don't, I don't think anyone consciously knows it. And I think Al Pacino has that thing that like Robert De Niro has, which is like, I want to have some fun. Wouldn't it be fun to do Rocky and Bullwinkle? I'd be fun to do a crazy character. I actually kind of like the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie. I have not seen it. I so. kind of like the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie. I like Rocky and Bullwinkle. I kind of like the Rocky and Bullwinkle movie. So you see, I feel like there's like a, an element of like these big actors and everyone wants a big actor. Like I just had, um, I do the show, like you said, NTSF and, uh, we got Ray Liotta to come on the show. Mm-hmm. Ray Liotta, all he wants to do is comedy. 
And it was so great. Like we just had him, like we told him the idea. He was really into it, came and did it. And I think like these guys are just, they're getting so many scripts all the time. Like uh, Danny Trejo was an interesting guy to talk to. We had him on the show a little while ago. And Danny Trejo, we didn't even talk about movies. We're just like, this guy's been in so many awesome, crazy things. That's an things. interesting character. Yeah. And he and came I was from like, prison. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he came from, he, like straight out of prison, he was in like an AA support group or a, a, a drug support group. And the guy was like, hey, can you come to the set of this movie? I think I might fall off the wagon. And Trejo was like, yeah, yeah, I'll come. And the director saw him and was like, oh, man, you should be an extra. And he was like, okay, I'll do that. And he's like, can you actually box? And he's like, yeah, I can do that. He's like, you should do that too. So like he became an actor just by like helping somebody not, you know, stay off their, uh, stay off drugs. But he has an ama- um, amazing, amazing story. I, mean, I, I was really psyched to talk to him because he's been in so many movies. And both some, good and bad. Good, both both good. good and bad. I mean, he admittedly does student films. Yeah. Like, he's like, people want me, I'll do it. Which and is I, cool. I, it's I, awesome. I that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so it's like, I just feel like, you know, I, I do it. I mean, I hope people do it with me. Like when I have them, when we have people come on the league or we have people come on NTSF, it's like, trust us that you won't look ridiculous. So you don't know when you're in something bad. I don't think, unless like the production's going poorly and there's no fun on set, I think everyone's like, this is going to be good. It'll cut together funny. And, and you, you, I don't know. I, I mean, that's at least my experience of it is like, I've never met, I've never talked to anyone who was like, oh yeah, we knew. I mean, besides like the room and Birdemic, right. like where people are like, oh yeah, this, we knew going into it. It's more like, oh, or perfect. You know, it's like, there's, I don't know. There's, you just don't know. It's because like there's so many steps removed. Like after you leave, the scenes that you're not in, how they're edited together, music, how it's released, how it's marketed, all like greatly affects like the end product. And you could just be like, oh, did not know about that at all. Because I'm sure like, why wouldn't Al Pacino want to work with Adam Sandler? Adam Sandler, every movie he makes makes a hundred million dollars. People mm-hmm, like them. Right. You know, it's like, oh yeah, he'll just do this thing. But but I would argue that um, I love Jill. I think Jill is actually a really good character. You didn't like Jack. I, I do think, like, you know, I know people, like, I, I enjoyed that movie. On a, it's like, it's a crazy movie. But, like, Adam Sandler is trying. Like, he's not, he's not like, giving up. He's like, I'm committing to Jill. And I kind of like Al Pacino and Jill's relationship. That's the, they, they're together in that movie? Yeah, they, like, he's obsessed with Jill. Have you ever, like, torn apart a movie on your podcast on, like, Saturday? And then Monday, you're working with one of those people, and you're like, oh, shit. There's been a couple of times where I've been real nervous that someone would have heard something that we said. Um, I, di- I think I think we did a Tom Hanks movie, and I did this uh, thing on uh, this Tom Hanks animated project called like Electric City. I was like, "Ooh, I hope he doesn't know about that." Or like, you know, there's what's a, a bad Tom Hanks movie? I don't know. Actually, maybe I, we didn't do. It. Maybe we were going to do it and then we didn't do it. It might have been. <laughs> Is it Joe vs. the Volcano? No, I like Joe. I like Joe vs. Yeah. the Volcano too. I was going to say it might have been the, the one, one with on the moped, the new one. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Larry, well, Larry Crown. Crown friend, yeah. and, and we may not have done it, but no. I, I mean, we try to. We, you know, we are very specific. Like, we try to look around and be like, you know, I, I'm not going to lie and say we don't like... We were, we're Between Jason, June, and I, we're all actors, we're all writers, we're all producers. So it's like, we try to be smart about the, the mm-hmm. targets we pick. And what we've been doing now lately is going, everyone can agree this is a bad movie. Yeah. Like, we don't go, let's go talk about Battleship. We're not everyone. Maybe people will have feel that way, but like Batman and Robin, you can't argue. Yeah, with. yeah. Like, no one from Batman and Robin's gonna be like, "What? He said Batman and Robin was bad." Yes. Yeah, so like we we in the beginning we were doing a lot more like what came out. Oh, sucker punch! Let's go watch it. And I think we all there was a part a part of us that were like, we can maybe just hang out and do the we can hit those back on DVD. Like once public opinion has been a little bit more locked mm-hmm. in, because I think that that helps us too. Because like. Although I don't know if anyone in the industry like listens to podcasts, but I don't, I don't know. I they listen to this one. Yeah, they, well, that's they it. appreciate that. Yeah, so I mean, but like, so I feel like that's what we've been doing lately is just going like, let's just pick a safe, safer bad yeah. movies, and they're actually more fun too. Yeah, because you can, I guess, be more ruthless with them, and like, well, and worse. you can, and you can also, they're also guaranteed to be because when something is like known to be bad, it's more fun. Like again, uh, if you go see, I'm trying to think of one of the early ones. Okay, so like a uh, perfect one, Nicolas Cage movie, Season, Season of, of the, the Witch. Witch. Yeah, it's it's not good. It's not great. It's just not. It's nothing. It's sort of like there's some okay, some stuff to talk about, but it's not like I would much more prefer to do. A crazier Nick Cage movie, you know, it's like, it's like almost like I felt like we were forcing it at moments too. It's like, well, this is bad, but it's not bad. Like it's not legendarily bad. Right, right, right. And when it's legendarily bad, 
you could talk about like Judge Dredd. We just did an episode about oh, Judge Dredd. Oh, interesting. And Judge Dredd is great. It's like it's like, oh man, I've forgotten about that movie. Wait, Rob Schneider Rob and, Sh- yeah, yeah, yeah. and Sylvester Stallone did a movie together. So it's like There's that reboot of that coming out. Yeah, with I, Carl Urban. I right? saw the trailer for it and I like I had I am generally read enough about movies online that I thought I would have known about it. I had no idea that existed. I oh, saw the, yeah. I saw the I was like, this exists, and I can watch a two-minute trailer of it right now. And it's, like, dark and serious, and it's, you know... And it's, it's uh, the woman who plays... I've heard her name, but she plays Cersei on uh, Game of Thrones. Oh, she's yeah, like, she, She's yeah, the, the bad guy in that movie. It also looks a lot like... they. The plot of that movie looks a lot like... And this is not an incredible plot. Um, the Raid, which was so good. Oh, I the raid? love The Raid. And yeah, The, the Raid thing, is amazing. Judge Dredd looks like it's going to be the same thing, where yes. it's like they, they're at the bottom of the building and they have to work their way up to the top. Which is going to, I mean, yeah. The Raid, I'm, I'm a huge fan of The Raid. The raid. But th- is The Raid a bad movie? No, I don't think so. Do you? No, definitely not. Yeah. I thought it was incredible. I mean, I think The Raid is like I a think... movie that would be like so awesome and like, like that I want people, more people to know about it. I just, you know. I mean, like, like the plot and characters are obviously not very good, but uh, the action, and the, it's like if you... It'd be like going to see Step Up this weekend yes. and judging oh. it based on the characters instead of the dance sequences. Like, to me, I'm a huge fan of Step Up. I love those movies. But I would talk about that movie the same way we talk about Crank 2. It's like, wait, I mean, because it's, it's, like, I enjoy, like, I'll watch a Step Up. Like, I watched that last one, like, Step Up 3D. I've never seen a Step Up movie. Oh, uh, Step Up 3D is pretty great. Do you uh, see it in 3D? Yes. I mean, once great. I missed it in theaters, I was like. Yeah, yeah, you might be. It, but Step Up in the theaters are is kind of fun. It's like the dancing is pretty good. The dialogue and, sure. the, and, and the stuff that connects it. Like basically the, um, spoiler alert, but Step Up 3, like the, the big twist at the end is like, I want to major in dance and math. And the, and like the dean at NYU is like, you can. And he's like, yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, that's like, but I mean. But how yeah. much is, what, I yeah. thought what made the raid so good. How much is Step Up? Is dancing and how much is the characters and the plot, which I'm assuming are not. I would great. say 80 20. 80 percent dancing, 20 percent. That's, that's yeah. great. That's good because that's yeah. what I liked about the raid. Is I feel like sometimes when you watch an inferior kung fu movie, yeah. you're like, why is this whole thing not just kung fu? Just get it going. Just, just yeah. Fight, once it's fight, kung fight. fu, just nonstop. I, why don't ever stop fighting? And that's what I felt like the raid was like. I felt like they stopped. Yeah as little as they possibly could. It was like, well, here's a little other thing, okay, but to connect these characters, great, we're moving, we're moving. Yeah. I mean, the other movie I loved that I've seen recently, too, like, I just love, I love movies in general, like, I loved uh, Attack the Block, too, which oh, is Attack another, the Block is like, so good. great, like, I was like, oh, why aren't all that's movies not even, like that? I don't that's even have to ask if that's good or bad, no, that's yeah, obviously that's great amazing, movie. yeah, it's great. Um, but yeah, I don't know, I mean, I'm getting, like, as we do this, and we're almost getting to, like, our 50th episode, I feel like we're hitting them, we're finding movies lately that are more fun to talk about and that's been fun for me like finding le- finding more legendary bad movies just gives us more fodder and it also I think it's fun for the I, I think for people to listen because like oh yeah I forgot about Judge Dredd with Sylvester Zahn totally. oh yeah I forgot about Batman and Robin by the way you can't find Batman and Robin anywhere it's oh, on I own Netflix it. I own it oh, yeah. now listen I own to it DVD now too listen the DVD swap episode yeah. of this podcast I have a copy of I'm, Batman and Robin I bought mine for five bucks online I like, but like that's the thing it's like you can tell sometimes in studios are embarrassed by someone. They're like, oh, and then you'll hide this. Well, you know away. what I think they do with Batman and Robin is I think they sell a box set of like yes, those of four all Batman. four of them. Yeah. So if you want to own Batman or Batman Returns, which you feasibly might, you have yes. to also buy. That's uh, that's the sleaziest. Oh, they do it's that. the worst. My, like my, like when they have like the Matrix. I'm sure you can't buy Matrix. One, no. you have to buy all three at the same yeah, time. Yeah, you got to get them all. Like uh, I will say that my trick for this podcast, I tell everybody when they listen to the show, is like. Amazon used is uh, your yeah, big. Yeah. I've bought DVDs for like fifty cents, and they're great. They're in the cover box still, and everything. It's like, yeah, you'll get them. Like used Amazon is the way to go. I had to buy for something we were working on a copy of Double Dragon, terrible movie, oh, obviously. Wow. Yeah, and it came with like a Palmer video sticker on the box, and yes, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The stories this tape could tell. Oh, it's the, gone into the, people's homes. It's been the, on DVD shelves. Yeah, I love it. Do you miss going to the video store? I haven't been to a video store in forever. No, do you, yeah, you use no. Netflix, I'm I don't assuming? Think, yeah, Netflix. Like, do, don't you miss going to the store and, like, the aisles of potential? Like, when I was a kid, yeah. like, going to this, and I don't, I don't want to be like, uh, things are worse now because they're better you know like I think it's probably better that we can just right. watch everything on I guess Amazon, uh, Netflix Instant would be the modern day equivalent but, but it's, something it's, about going to that store and like looking through all the horror covers and well it's also like I feel like back when we were growing up looking at like going to the stores like you didn't know everything about all these movies like so you would really just like if the cover box sold you on something you'd be like yeah, that's what I'm getting. Mm-hmm. I worked at Blockbuster Video. Oh, for, what was on your favorites rack? Um, you know, we didn't have our own favorite. Oh racks. my god, why work at Blockbuster? I know. Video? 
Um, that was that was the most fun. Like working in a video store for me was. Oh, it was amazing. Yeah, I, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. And it was like, yeah, like. Did you yeah, get to you pick what it. movie was on in the store? Yes. And then we. What would we, you put on? We always put on stuff that would get us in trouble, I feel like. You know, like Lethal Weapon 2, or like, you know, like we were like, we just put on whatever we wanted. And then it came down from corporate. Like, we, we got into the phase of like where Blockbuster was churning like a new, or turning a new leaf where they'd be like, now we have to play this blockbuster tape that is a, oh. you know, that just like coming attractions or yeah. like buy popcorn. So it stopped being a little bit of fun, but we'd always have movies on in the back and just like whatever was new, we just pop it in the back and just keep it running. But it was, man, I love blockbuster video. It was fun, especially when you have to do inventory at night and you just like have the whole video sort of yourself and just scan VHS tapes. It was, it was great. Do you ever watch movies on airplanes? Yeah. I love watching a movie on an airplane. Oh, me too. What was the last movie you watched on an airplane? Last, well, like that was a part of the, not my own entertainment that I brought with me. Just, right? no, just randomly. Cause I feel like yes. what I like about it I'll is. I'll tell you, then I remembered 100%. Okay, what is it? Jonah Hex. Oh, that's so bad. Yes. Did you watch that for the podcast? I watched it in a, to debate whether, and I was like, well, it's terrible. I'm going to watch this. And I was like, and if it's good, like we'll do it for the podcast. And I watched it. I was like, it's so bad that it's not even fun to watch. And I was like, but it was like, because, like, when you're on an airplane, it's like, well, it's a roulette. Let's see. I just, like, we'll pick this one. That's I'm so one. sad, like, that you, you've you seen all these movies, but, like, you did it for the podcast. I'm like, no, I saw Punisher War, so uh, it was just for me. Uh, That's just for fun. I have wa- I mean, believe me, I've watched a lot of these movies in the past. Now it's, like, re-watching them, which is hard. Like, I was, like, I have like Spider-Man 3. I remember watching, when I watched that, I walked out of that theater. I was like, man. That's is- one of the most disappointed. If you look at all the movies that I think of you've done for your yeah. podcast, that's probably the one that should have been the best. Like the yes. like Spider Man one and two, uh, particularly two, are great. And like Spider Man three is probably the most disappointed. One of yeah, the most follow. disappointed I've ever seen in like I don't know, just going to a theater and like expecting to see a good movie and just And there's no reason to believe that it wouldn't be great because the other ones are so good. It's the same director, same actor, it's same so, everything. What happened with Spider Man three? What what went wrong there? Somebody wrote me an interesting thing uh on Twitter about it. They were like, I think that this is like that was uh, Sam Raimi just going like "screw you" to like because I think they gave him too many people to put in there, and they made they forced Venom in there. I mean, there's a lot of weird choices. I'm a huge Sam Raimi fan. Of I, I love like I love. I know a lot of people don't like that movie uh, "Drag Me to Hell." I really like oh, I Drag, love me, to Drag me to Hell. I think a lot of people like that. Yeah, movie. all right, good, good. I, I, and so yeah. I mean, so, Sam Raimi, like you don't have to explain your love of Sam yeah, Raimi. Okay, so yeah, I mean, I love everything. I bet that everyone he, that ever worked at a blockbuster loves Sam Raimi. Yeah, he's like, he's like a video store clerk's director. Yeah, he he makes great. And I mean stuff. that that that's like the highest compliment I can get. Of give. course, yeah. yeah, like like it's like Quentin Tarantino, like, like, that, like that. You love these guys, yeah. He, but that, like, I felt like the humor that he was trying to do in it was weird. And it he's wasn't a funny weird. dude. Like, like Evil yeah. Dead 2 is funny. Um, Super great. Yeah. Army of Darkness is very funny. Yeah. Like, he's done comedy. It's, it's, I just, it's just so hard to figure out what happened. Somebody just said it was like a fuck you to, like, that guy Avi Arred. Ar- Ar- Who's the, like, the guy who runs the Marvel shit. Which is basically, like, his whole thing is, uh, he, he, uh, whatchamacallit, Sony only owns one Marvel movie. And that's the one that he's connected to, Spider Man. And if he so doesn't, he's not the guy that runs all the Marvel movies. He's no, wrong. he's just the guy who's like at Sony who has the rights to that. So gotcha. the reason why they rebooted Amazing Spider Man was because it would run out of rights if he didn't make a new one. So mm. just to keep it alive, he's got like because he doesn't want to let Spider Man go into the Marvel universe. It's the reason right. why Spider Man's separate from all the other Marvel and movies. the X Men too. The X Men, yes, by Fox. So that's right. Why we can't have an Avengers vs X Men movie. Yeah. So it's like there's a this weird kind of cutoff. So like so like so I think that his attitude is I need more. I need you need to put Venom in there because I need a Venom movie. I need yeah, to do that. Yeah. I need to like they were talking but, about a Venom spinoff like before that movie came out. Topher yeah. Grace, who I like quite a bit. I like Topher yeah, Grace. Yeah, me too. That weird. Eddie Brock choice though that movie but it was, again, I believe that it was like Sam Raimi's revenge just because that's the most logical explanation I've ever heard for that movie just quality. being like you know what um, yeah you want me to do this I'll do it it'll be terrible here enjoy it enjoy this terrible movie it is uh, really did you like did you see Amazing Spider-Man mm-hmm. I did not like Amazing Spider-Man at all you know it's like just mediocre it wasn't bad like that's Spider-Man how, 3 that's it was how, just like no, no big swings there well to me like with my Amazing Spider-Man I was just sort of like okay it's fine. I, I, what I really liked about Amazing Spider-Man, especially after watching Spider-Man Three, is like I like Andrew Garfield a lot. I did, and I, and I really liked uh, Emma Stone a lot. Yeah, and I, I was like, right. I was like, just get them in a better, a better version of this movie. But I guess you need to reboot it to explain who they are. But I was like, 
I just want you to be like, we get it. We know. It's like the next guy who makes Batman, I really hope it's not an origin story. It's like, we know. We know. And I, I rewatched all the Batmans before seeing the uh, Dark Knight Rises. I was like, wow, Christopher Nolan actually made a really cool origin story Batman because it doesn't feel like an origin story. It mm-hmm. starts with action. It's really cool. and it has these flashbacks and it flashes forward. It's like it doesn't start the same way that I think all these movies start, which is like, oh, I'm depressed. Oh, I found right. this thing. It's like you're right in the mix. It's like it starts in that prison, you know, where he's like fighting and then you find out why he's fighting and what's going on. Another completely terrible superhero movie, really the dregs. Yeah. Uh, that was made for that exact reason. I mean, it's not, I don't even have to explain that it's bad. Uh, the exact reason where they had to make a movie to retain the rights, the Roger Corman Fantastic Four. Oh, my gosh. Which is like, yeah. um, this is before the Jessica Alba level right. Fantastic Four. Is, like, which is also not very good. Oh, that movie's terrible. How can you mess that up? I feel like the Fantastic Four should be a great movie. I know. Like, and they did it twice, and it was bad twice. There the are Hulk. two extreme... I think I only saw the first one. There are two... Ex- you're just saying extreme sports are like kind of a kiss of death. Yeah, yeah. There are two extreme sports scenes in Fantastic Four. There's like both a snowboarding and a motocross. I remember yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, right. It's like, yeah, it's like, that's again, four quadrants. Like, everyone will like this. We'll put the motocross in there. We'll get them to go to NASCAR. It'll be great. Uh, but they, uh, but yeah, no, that, yeah, that Roger Corman, phew, that's a bad one. That's really bad. Yeah. I remember I used to go to like, Star Trek conventions and stuff like in New York City when I was a kid and I bought a copy of that. Tell me the, about those. So I was young and um, my dad and I would go into the city and like, and it would be at like the Penta Hotel over on like 34th Street across the street from Madison Square Garden. And it would have this floor and it was just, it was a lot when, you know, before like conventions had gotten big and they would have these guys with like all these videotapes and it would be like, the Star Wars Christmas special, the Dolph Lundgren Punisher, mm-hmm. the Roger Corman Fantastic Four, and you could Which buy- Which I don't think was ever officially released. I think yeah. you can only see that as a bootleg. And so like you could buy all these bootlegs there, and then you could also like, you'd also see like James Doohan, the guy who played like Scott, you could just buy him drinks and he'd be singing in the bar and like, <laughs> you could like sit down with them and it was like a crazy thing. Like you could see like Leonard Nimoy dudes convert like talks and but that stuff. used to be like if you want to see Roger Corman uh, yeah Fantastic Four you had to go to one of those conventions to buy it and, and that's where I got it if you wanted to see it like you you had to reconsider what you were doing with your life but yeah exactly but it'd be like but it was like I remember like I had so many bootleg things that were just like at those conventions like what so else cool. well the Star Wars Christmas special mm-hmm. which is not amazing. officially available anywhere no yeah and like I George, think Lucas has said he's never gonna release it anywhere. yeah I mean he said like if he had a hammer in the time he'd go around and just personally destroy every copy of it yeah it's so bad um it's written as if someone never saw Star Wars and was like the title Star Wars it's a Christmas special do whatever you want and it's like it's it, another one that's like super serious it's all about like it's very much like a holocaust metaphor it's like the stormtroopers are coming and rounding up people and it's like it gets oddly serious it's like um and then like i guess a Dolph Lundgren's Punisher another like those 80s superhero movies yeah. like the 80s Captain America oh i forgot about that yeah have I had you ever that seen too. um this might be 90s but uh the David Hasselhoff Nick Fury movie no i did not even know that existed oh it exists uh, there is a D- Nick Fury movie Starring David Hasselhoff as Nick Fury. The only I've seen at least some of it. I don't think I've seen it from top to bottom. The only thing I can remember is that he he has a bomb behind his eye patch. That's the only a reason. Bomb. That's the only reason I'm like confident I know this movie exists is because I remember that one scene. Oh man, I'm so honored that I got to tell you I that a David so Hasselhoff excited. Nick Fury movie exists. Oh, I'm gonna be googling that the minute I leave here. Uh, yeah, it's like I feel like you know. I think the capper of all this sort of stuff, and I think you and I both have the same point of view, is like we go in with the highest of expectations. You want it to be good. Like I I go see every summer movie, and I want them mm-hmm, all mm-hmm. to be – like I want to love Amazing Spider-Man. I never, I never try to go in with like this is going to suck. Uh, and – and then when you get let down, that that feeling, that's what I feel like. That that's that the podcast all came out of that feeling of just being like, oh man, how could you? How could you do this? This is terrible. Just such a letdown. I haven't seen Birdemic. Birdemic. Yes. I have not seen Birdemic. Is that one of those movies, like a trauma movie, kind of where they know they're making a bad no. movie? No. Birdemic was supposed to be good. Yeah. Well, the girl uh, Whitney uh, Matson, or Ma- I forget her last name, but she was telling us this guy James. Uh, James, I forget how you pronounce his last name, but this guy, this director, didn't speak much English, but really wanted to make a movie, wrote it, and was shooting it like sometimes they were holding the boom mic in between their legs as they were doing the scene. So like he just had no, 
he was trying to make a movie. He was trying to make a love story. How did that guy I, get enough money to make a movie? I mean, um, enough money? I, I think it was for like thousands of dollars, not like- Thousands of dollars is a lot of money. I, I, yeah, it is, but like- I'm thinking like under ten thousand. I, like, I, I don't think it would. And I think he came from. Um, and what's crazy? He came from like a like an internet background, so he may have been his. And if they spent ten thousand dollars on that movie, they've definitely made it back. Oh, a hundred percent. It's like, like when you. Uh, it's like when you shoot the moon in spades, and you like you're supposed to get rid of spades, but then yeah. if you get all the spades, you get like more points than if you had just gotten some. Like yeah, you yeah. Need to get, you need to get all, all, or, no, the, yeah. all or none. So it's like it's like you do so bad that it's actually kind of good. And and to me, like the room is way more watchable than uh, than Birdemic. Birdemic is super great though. I find the room to be very unwatchable. Oh so really? Oh place. my gosh! Every, every time I watch, I'm like, oh, I'm in. I can watch this again. It's so crazy and bad. Um, the uh, Birdemic though, I was at the Tim and Eric screening. They did a Tim and Eric premiere of it at CineFamily in L.A. And they brought out the director and the cast. It was the first time the director had seen it with an audience. And I don't think he understood why people were laughing. Oh, and then he came. And that was when you feel bad. That's true. Because we're all on one side. And the company that was releasing it, they're, like, they're passing out um, uh, coat hangers because there's a coat hanger scene in the movie where they're like swatting away things. And in the middle of the movie, they're like shooting out birds at the audience. And uh, And I think the director, when he was talking about it, was like, no, this is a serious movie. It's a love story. It's a love story, and it's also a tale about ecological destruction. And I'm trying to make people, you know, I'm bringing them in with the idea that it's a horror movie, but they're going to learn something, and they're also going to feel something. And so, like, hearing him talk about it, and then Whitney told us, she's like, yeah, he's kind of dropped that now. He kind of goes, oh, yeah, it's a comedy. And, like, Tommy Wiseau with The Room, he's like, oh, yeah, The Room's a dark comedy. He's like... No, you never set out to make a dark comedy. Like the guy who was on our show to talk about the room, he said Tommy set out to be the next Tennessee Williams, and that's and that's now the retroactive is like, oh no no no, it was always to be a comedy. But he doesn't understand why people are wa- laughing either. Did you watch trauma movies growing up? Yeah yeah. What definitely. do you think of tr- trauma? Because trauma I love them growing up, and now that I watch them, like the fact that they know they're bad, like kind of takes some of the fun out of it. Yeah, like trauma movies. I feel like I I never got into like Sergeant Kabuki Man, right, and, right. You know, Toxic Avenger and stuff like that. I just kind of felt like I don't know. It never was like a hundred percent up my alley. Like I was just like. I watched them and I thought they were cool and they always seemed dirty and like I was a kid, I was like, ooh, boobs. Like, you know, like sure. um but uh but yeah, no, yeah, they're not yeah, I agree. Do you ever watch safety videos? Cause that was something my friends and I love to do in oh, high school. Speaking yeah. of working at Blockbuster, Blockbuster had this aisle of yes. safety videos. You can rent as, for free. As a public service, you can rent for free. And we would rent all the safety Those videos. Those are just, great. Like, rip on them. It was so fun. There's a great one that we just saw. Oh, it was um I was uh I was hosting or guest hosting Attack of the Show for a week. That's and they cool. had a uh, a Fourth of July one out, and it was this guy in this terrible like Darth Vader suit, all red. And it was like the most, it was like called like the extinguisher. And it was all about teaching kids not to light fireworks. And they treated bottle rockets as if they were M80s. Like, no! What are you doing? Hey, check this out. Every year, hundreds of people see their dreams go up in smoke as a result of illegal bottle rockets. When this shoots into the air, you don't know where it'll land. Maybe on someone's roof. That's what happened here. Yeah, like a kid shot a bottle rocket on his roof and the whole house caught fire. It was like, oh, safety videos are amazing. YouTube is the best place for safety videos. I love, my favorite is uh, Bike Safety Camp. Have you ever seen Bike Safety Camp? It's like, it's about this magical, well, the camp's not that magical, but there's a magical counselor who, like, runs and dances, and he, like, sings about bike safety. Think about it, smart guy. How can a camp where you learn about bicycle safety be anything but boring, boring, and boring? So you silly, silly campers think bike safety's a bore? Well, you're gonna love it, love it, gonna beg for more. You're gonna say, Sam Sprocket, I just can't get enough. By the time this camp is done, you'll love this safety stuff. <laughs> Cause when you ride like a dope, you end up in the dirt. You sing, squirm, and crawl, all embarrassed or hurt. But when you practice bike safety, you can cruise, you can fly, you can get where you are going like a jet up in the sky. You can ride down the road with the greatest of ease And you won't risk your life and you won't skin your knees Although you think you're above it You're gonna ride safe and love it Ha <laughs> ha!
Have you? Like, well, then, have you seen the Henry Winkler "Don't Touch Me"? Oh yeah, I had the pleasure of seeing that as uh, just kind of being surprised by it. Like someone found it at Goodwill, and we were like, "Okay, let's watch." I this. saw the full one like that too. I didn't see then, cut, but rec- I saw recently like a segment from it online. I think one of the songs. I can't remember. Yeah, which like, one. people sometimes try to give a thing a different name. We often feel embarrassed or even feel some shame. But when speaking of our private parts, here's what to proclaim. That penis is what boys have down in front. Penis is the word, though it seems blunt. That one's really crazy. Like, Henry Winkler's playing Fonzie, yeah. too. And he's like, hey, don't let people touch him. Henry Winkler, the nicest guy in the world, not making fun of him. But it's no, like, it's so a crazy... Too. And of course, like, yeah, I mean, the Fonzie... Of course he's the nicest guy. He's, like, volunteering his time and his to, image yeah. to, like, make this video for, obviously, a good cause. I'm not saying the cause isn't worth it. No. Did you see the Mr. T one? Uh, be somebody or be somebody. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's not even a safety video. That's a cinematic experience. Yeah. That's a film. Mother, there is no other like mother. There's another Mr. T movie that I have that I found. Like CVS is the best place to kind of take a, a crapshoot at movies. Like Curtis Gwynn and uh, and John Gemberling, who are from the UCB here and they uh, works with me on NTSF. He they found Troll Two in a CVS. Troll Two, if you haven't heard about that, I mean uh, Troll yeah. Two, amazing movie. Uh, the documentary that they made about Troll Two is really it. good. I haven't seen that. That's well worth your time. Mm-hmm. Almost even better than Troll Two. Um, because again, a director did not know he was making a bad movie. But I found a movie called The Strongest Man in the World with Mr. T. That is. I've never heard. Of, I thought you were going to say DC Cab. Oh, no, no. Strongest Man in the World, Mr. T, 299. And uh, just about Mr. T mentoring like all these kids. And he was a bouncer at this like cool club. and But it's like CVS or Dwayne Reed, whatever, when you walk into these like pharmacies, always look in their discount bins. You'll find. Like, Everything in those discount bins are pretty bad. You never see like great blockbusters. Yeah. Right? They're always like two ninety nine. Oh, I didn't know Kate Hudson made uh, a sea scavenger movie. Like <laughs> I like when you're at like a rest stop, like a gas station, yeah. and like they have like the bin of like three ninety nine DVDs. Yeah, that's like, the that's it. That's the bin. Like that one with like Anna Nicole Smith, where she's like, it's like skyscraper or oh, something. Yeah, the Di- Anna Nicole Smith and Die Hard essentially. It's amazing. That's, yeah. that's, that's uh, the pr- the premise of that is amazing. I have this TV Carnage videos, and they have all of her outtakes where she's just like can't say one line without going, uh, oh, what is it? Oh, it's so upsetting. Uh, do you watch a lot of bad TV shows too? Because it seems like something that's in NTSF. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I definitely. I mean, yes. Um, Which you also created. Yeah. Yeah. We mentioned that at the top. It, you created NTSF, and it seems like it's based on a lot of that was definitely bad TV based. Shows. Yeah. Like to me, like based on all these like bad procedurals. I didn't actively search them out. Like uh, as until I watched. So we started working on the show. Then I started watching like a lot of CSIs and stuff like that. One of my favorite bad TV shows is. Uh, is basically is um, Studio 60 on the Sunset Strip yeah. the Aaron Sorkin one that was one I started watching I was like oh I'm watching this because it's so bad it's good but then for NTSF CSI Miami you can't beat it it's amazing they have a, a crime that happens in outer space they go into outer space to figure out really? yes basically the idea is that Richard Branson a Richard Branson S character has a ship that goes into outer space people pay to go on it and then they murder someone in outer space and they go alright well we gotta go up and see who could have shot him because the bullet with zero gravity how would it oh have hit oh my god I mean it's uh, you know, in CSI regular, they had a guy who was like a nutritionist who believed in like blending people's body parts. So we we're always trying to top them in our show, trying to top them because they're so crazy. But it's harder to watch bad TV because to commit to bad TV, There's I don't a lot know. Of it. It's a lot. It's a lot. Like uh, my friend Gil Oseri oh, did. Uh, he watched every episode of Two and a Half Men. I saw that, and that was amazing. Two and a half days of Two and a Half Men. He yeah, it. exactly. Two and a half days of Two and a Half Men, nonstop. Every episode of Two and a Half Men, and the teaser scene in Due Date. Uh, you know, because they're like at the end of Due Date, the Robert Downey Jr. movie. Yeah. They have like a a, a scene where uh, I guess Zach's character is on Two and a Half Men. It's 
it's bananas. It's, I mean, that was, but that's like, I can't get behind that. Like, like you're saying, it's like, I couldn't watch, I'll watch all these bad movies, but I couldn't watch three episodes of Family Matters in a row. Yeah. Like, oh, don't have to. Perfect Strangers that. is tough to get through, too. Perfect Strangers. I was a kid, I love that. Even show. though they're all the same, they're all like, yeah. one shouldn't be better than the other. Are there any movies that get worked their way into NTSF? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, NTSF, like, I, I mean, we did, um, we have a whole episode this season that like, makes fun of the Twilight movies. Um, Max Greenfield plays this guy, uh, like a Robert Pattison character, who's in a new movie called Stein, which is like a romantic Frankenstein movie. And, they're, and it's come to San Diego and the directors keep on getting killed. We do some Point Break stuff. We do some Fast and the Furious stuff. Like all the stuff that I love. Like, we do a 21 Jump Street TV show, less movie, more TV show. That was a TV show I loved. Mm-hmm, and yeah. so like that movie was great too. The movie was great too. So yeah. funny. So funny. Uh so we yeah, so like basically all the things that I I love action movies. Like that's my weak spot. Like so like yeah, so I'm always like going like, oh we could do that. We can do like a diehard version of this. We could do that. We, you know, so it's pulling everything in. Yeah. It, there's also that one uh, in the first season that was like a horror movie with the uh, with the the dolphin. I want to. Oh say. yeah, yeah, the yeah. dolphin. Yeah, like it was like Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, we right. did. And this season we do a Paranormal Activity episode too. All found footage, all on flip cams. Are there any movies you like want to get a, a a reference to or do an episode about that you haven't been able to do yet? Um, not off the top of my head because I think we normally just go we whatever we come up with we're running i think we're trying to figure out a good way to do a diehard parody that has not been done before and we've talked about it and like and like yeah and it's like and so we keep on hitting brick wall yeah exactly it's been done so many times and done well i mean diehard in a blank was like a dominant movie genre for most of the 90s yeah so it's like we we've that's the one that we've actually tried to tackle a couple times like we do like comic-con we'll do like diehard and comic-con and we're like ah and then we like and we always it's a good idea for like about five, ten minutes, and then we always bail on it. But Die Hard is like one of my favorite movies that we can't figure out an angle on. Are there any others that you've like tried to figure out and bailed on? Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we've talked about. We've talked about um, – that's one that comes to my mind. Um, you know, Fast and the Furious is really fun to do this year because it's like we have a whole – but the Fast and the Furious episode almost became a Tron episode because – we came very apparent to us that we couldn't afford to do like these amazing mm-hmm. chasings that they cost a lot of money. And so we're like, well, what if they're like go to a virtual reality club and they have a virtual reality race? And we're like, oh, that would be fun. Let's do that. And then it then like the episode takes a decidedly Tron point of view. And that was really fun to like kind of like jump into that new Tron world and, you know, and make it uh, fun and dumb. Yeah. But I mean, we're always in, I think with our show this season, especially like, Last season was a lot more about making fun of like TV procedurals, and we we're like, oh, I think that's going to run out of steam if we keep on doing that because we'll just change specifics. And this season, it's much more about like the ensemble and bigger ideas, and just trying to make crazier stuff. And it's starting again soon. Yes, August 9th, twelve fifteen, right after Children's Hospital on Adult Swim. Perfect match those two shows. Yeah, it's really it's fun. Great. We have a good good time. And anything else we can plug? We'll be, the league will be back in October. The league will be back in October. And the podcast is every other week. Well, you can listen to it every week. Thank you so much for talking to me about these movies. I this hope, is so uh, fun. Yeah, it was well, really fun. Let's go watch the uh, David Hasselhoff. I have Nick to Fury see that. Track. Yeah, I have to see that. And I'll show you like, Safety Camp. We got a lot, we got a lot I to get see through. It. All right, awesome. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, bye-bye. Paul Shear, everybody. Give it up for Paul Shear. I have now seen the second season premiere of NTSF, and it is hilarious, so do not miss that. And stay up to date on all your Jeff Rubin, Jeff Rubin needs at the various outlets of my social media empire. I release episodes early sometimes, and I only put them on Twitter, where I'm at Jeff Rubin Show, or on my Facebook fan page, or on Tumblr at jeffrubinjeffrubin.com, or at youtube.com slash jeffrubin, jeffrubin. Thank you for listening, everyone. I know a minute of bike safety camp, a little indulgent, but my show, my favorite thing, you had to listen. Go to YouTube, watch bike safety camp, and uh, I'll talk to you more next episode.